Natalia Gavrilitsa, your country has taken in the largest share of uh, refugees from Ukraine per capita uh, out of all the welcoming countries, um, and yet it is one of the poorest countries in Europe. How is Moldova coping at the moment? Indeed, uh, the Moldovan border has been crossed by 400,000 Ukrainian refugees fleeing the war and uh, the terrible consequences of this unjust war. Um, about 100,000 uh, refugees decided to stay in Moldova. This is uh, at a stable population of around 2.7 uh, million, uh, represents uh, more than 3% uh, of our population, almost 4. And these are vulnerable populations, a lot of single mothers with children, uh, so half of the refugee population are children, and then uh, the elderly, of course. And, we have been able to do this only through extraordinary solidarity demonstrated by the Moldovan people. Uh, we have um, an unprecedented mobilization. Uh, we have thousands of volunteers. We have volunteer families who are taking uh, refugees in. Uh, we have private sector organizations who are making donations, non-governmental organizations. So it's really a society-wide effort. You've already called for immediate international support. That's one of the reasons why you're in Berlin. Germany, together with France and Romania, is hosting this donors conference for Moldova. Germany has already pledged an additional 5 million euros in terms of development aid for Moldova. It is also taking in some of the refugees arriving in Moldova. What else do you need in terms of concrete support now from the international community? Indeed, um, you know, outside of Ukraine, uh, Moldova is the most uh, affected country and it doesn't even have a security umbrella and uh, uh, you know we're not talking only about the societal effort to host the refugees but the economic and social consequences of the war on our borders uh, so trade has been disrupted uh, about 15 percent of our trade uh, was with Ukraine and Russia and Belarus uh, the Odessa port was a very important logistics port um, and uh, we also uh, have uh, an impact on remittances received by the country. So under these circumstances, uh, you know, we, we have the same problems that many European countries have. So we have uh, uh, extraordinary costs for energy. We have very high inflation. So inflation already reached 18% in Moldova. And together with this decline in trade and um, uh, growth, we are basically looking at the need for a great fiscal effort. So we first, uh, uh, our first need are in fact grants uh, to support the budget deficit. Uh, we have been indebted uh, because of COVID and we are reaching our debt sustainability levels. So uh, we are uh, requesting budget support in the form of grants, but also uh, you know, we have to accelerate um, our reforms in key areas, uh, energy efficiency and security, competitiveness of our small and medium enterprises, uh, and reorientation of trade. Um, uh, we have uh, important uh, measures to build resilience in cybersecurity, fighting disinformation. Uh, we need uh, support uh, for our social resilience, for our borders. So we came with a list of uh, projects that are becoming priority in light of the crisis. Now, your country is watching what is going on in Ukraine very, very closely, also because of your special situation in the country where Transnistria is, of course, one of the regions where the Russian army has been stationed for decades now. Just how worried are you that Vladimir Putin might target you next? Uh, we are, of course, uh, concerned and we remain very vigilant. Uh, we currently uh, do not see um, any specific uh, plans or movements uh, that would lead to the conclusion of an intent uh, to engage the Russian troops stationed in the separatist transistor region uh, in the war. But uh, of course, the situation is highly uncertain. Uh, so uh, under these circumstances, uh, as uh, I mentioned already, we really need to build up uh, our capacities very quickly to control the border, to control arms, uh, to uh, um, uh, have an, uh, an uh, exchange, uh, sort of a, an effective exchange of information with our partners. So, uh, you know, we have to remain vigilant and to do everything possible uh, to mitigate uh, the consequences of this war. 
Now, you have applied for EU membership. Just in light of uh, what is going on also in Transnistria, um, how confident are you that this can be more than a symbolic step for your European partners? Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, this uh, request to join the European Union is a natural next step for us because we had the association agreements and we've been implementing reforms under that agreement, the free trade agreement with the EU. Um, and uh, uh, the Moldovan people in the last presidential and parliamentary elections um, expressed their strong will uh, for a uh, European type of development, for uh, anti-corruption, building good governance and institutions, uh, ensuring rule of law and reforming the justice sector. We've always known that this is not something that can be done overnight and that uh, a lot of work has to be done for our homework to be, to be complete. Uh, but uh, uh, the perspective, especially in these hard times, are actually a very important uh, signal for the people of our region. Uh, it's a signal that, um, you know, if you work, if you do the reforms, if you do your homework, then you would be welcomed uh, in the family of uh, EU countries. And, uh, you know, we are very determined to stay part of the free world um, and, uh, you know, we'll do everything possible internally to ensure uh, that uh, uh, we uh, are uh, getting closer and closer to the European Union. Now, last question, if I may. Uh, you will be meeting with lots of diplomats, but also counterparts from all parts of Europe as well. Uh, what is your message to those politicians here in the west of Europe um, who are still reluctant to impose really tough sanctions? You coming from a country where you can hear what is going on in Ukraine because the border is just around the corner. What kind of a message are you bringing to those reluctant politicians? Uh, it's a message of unity, yeah, you know, really uh, the strength of uh, Europe and the strength of the free world is really in unity and solidarity and uh, thinking together about uh, various uh, mechanisms uh, that uh, would, first of all, bring peace uh, in our region uh, and on our continent, and then second, uh, would uh, uh, help uh, the people of the region uh, get through these uh, difficult times together ev and become even stronger than before. Natalia Gavrilitsa, thank you very much. Thank you.